Well, those are, uh, you know, temporary restraining orders and protective orders are something that are used, I don't want to say all the time, but they're used very, very frequently. What is different now is that temporary restraining orders used to be used a whole lot more than they are currently. And the reason for that is most of the big counties around uh, the state of Texas, or at least around North Texas, have what are called standing orders. And those standing orders basically incorporate the majority of things that were in a temporary restraining order. That's going to say like, you know, uh, don't go taking the kids out of the state of Texas for the purpose of changing their domicile. Don't change beneficiaries on health insurance policies or life insurance policies. You can spend money on an attorney. You can spend money to, you know, on running your business. You can do, you know, X, Y, and Z. So those are the types of things that you typically saw in a temporary restraining order. Where you would still use one now is, say, if you were seeking what's commonly called a kickout order. Now, what's a kickout order? That's, say, I have um, a guy has come to me and told me that his, you know, his wife is bipolar, and when she is off her medication, she gets violent or becomes threatening, and and it scares him and it, and it scares the kids. That would be a situation where I at least would want to use a temporary restraining order and would ask to have a kickout order, meaning ask to have her ordered to be removed from the house. She couldn't be there until a temporary order hearing was had. Now, in a situation where the, the threats are bad enough, and, and how do you quantify that? You know, once again, case by case basis. You might want to use a protective order, okay? But the judges are much more sensitive to that just because of what the ramifications of someone being saddled with a protective order are. Now, if typically when I use a protective order is if I have someone who has been physically assaulted, okay? If I have somebody who has been physically assaulted and the police have come out and, uh, and the perpetrator's been arrested, you know, I'm absolutely going to go seek a protective order unless there's a phenomenal reason not to do so. Uh, a lot of the time I will take a temporary restraining order as a backup just in case a judge will not sign the protective order. And, you know, it's kind of rare in a situation like that that the judge wouldn't sign a protective order. The situation where they might not is if, if you cannot establish that there is a real sense of the possibility of irreparable harm that is about to happen. You know, if, is that person in immediate danger? Well, if they're not, or if that person is not excluded from the house or kept 500 feet away from them, is there a real, real distinct possibility that there's going to be, you know, an injury? If the answer to that is yes, then you absolutely want to seek that, seek that remedy. It's got, you know, more teeth to it than a, than a temporary restraining order um, and, and can be something that is, that is real important to try to get for your client.